It's been four days since the strongest storm ever recorded slammed into the Philippines. While early estimates of 10,000 dead had been revised down to 2,500, a desperate scramble to bring relief to hundreds of thousands of survivors is now underway. Televisions around the world are filled with images like these of unimaginable destruction. Damage more reminiscent of a monster tornado than a typhoon or hurricane. But when Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines on Friday, it packed sustained winds of 195 miles an hour, leaving no building intact. Now, four days later, the need for relief is staggering in coastal towns like Gion. Food to eat, we want. Everything, everything's gone. So we need help. Town residents were completely cut off until this Philippine military mission reached them yesterday. The mayor there says the situation is desperate. I don't know where to start. If you will take a look of our, of our municipality, it was totally hit, total damage, 100 percent damage. And that's making it almost impossible for Filipino Americans trying to track down family members. Hana Fadragalan moved to Boston when she was 13, but still has extended family in Luzon, just north of where Haiyan struck. Everyone's okay in my family. How did you reach everyone? Uh, through Facebook. Because in the beginning, some of the communications line, lines were cut. So we couldn't, they couldn't reach us and we couldn't reach them uh, right away. Teodoro Parena emigrated from the Philippines in 1993. He says it took several days to reach his family in Leyte, another hard-hit area. We were right on the path. We were on the eye of the storm. And I found out only today that my folks back home are doing fine. But for many others, it may be days before they learn the fate of their loved ones. My next guest has family members who are still unaccounted for in the Philippines. Joe Bolandrina is a Boston resident who's been helping other local families in the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan. Welcome, Joe. Thank you very what, much. What uh, area of the Philippines is your family in? My mother's from Bohol, my father's from Surigao, and just recently I found that uh, most of our, our relatives are accounted for. There are some that still aren't, but it doesn't seem like they're in a bad way, so my heart is lifted a bit, but the whole nation is still suffering. So you're, those areas are also in the central part of the Philippines, is that, that correct? That is correct. So they could have very well have been affected. Well, my, co my cousins and my family in Bohol were more affected by the earthquake, which was just a few just weeks Just a few weeks that. ago. That's correct. Yeah. And what happened to them for that? I have two first-degree cousins that lost their houses. One of them actually is, uh, he immigrated to America about 15 years ago and was saving money and was building a beautiful house oh. there. The house has collapsed. And I understand uh, upwards of 23 churches in the area were destroyed during this. Now, how were you able to communicate? Facebook as well? Also Facebook. It was that and uh, Rappler was something that I just learned about and started to frequent just to try to get my finger on the pulse. Rappler. Rappler.com. Yeah. But they have to have internet access. That's in, correct. Which, which, which there can't be any wireless or anything in some of these communities. I'm blessed that the, 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 the feedback we've been getting does confirm that they have that type of communication. But I know that, there's, that you're absolutely correct. There's places that yeah. are just devastated. All right, I want to bring in another uh, voice here. Cecilia Lazaro lives and works in the Philippines as a broadcast journalist. She flew out of the country the same day the typhoon hit. Did you know, Cecilia, that it yes. was coming? Yes, I was aware there had been warnings already days before. The government had issued all of the uh, disaster coordinating committees to start revving up. Uh, the day, the morning I left, this was a trip planned many, many months ago. Uh, the day I left at about 4.40 in the morning when the uh, typhoon hit landfall in the Philippines, um, people had already been evacuated. In fact, people were well aware of the typhoon, but it seems that Tacloban, which was the hardest yeah. hit, uh, many people were still not uh, caught, were caught unprepared. Yeah, we don't understand that. Why not? Did, were, they, were they not informed? Did, were, they, were they just weren't, did, they, they, they didn't think it was really going to be that bad? Why? Uh, you know, we have about 20 typhoons per year yes. in the Philippines. And this is a daily occurrence for us. This is nothing unusual. But the intensity and the, and the, uh, the disaster that this particular typhoon has wrought has outstripped all other estimates. As you said, yeah. the dead are, uh, they, for now, it's 2,000 plus, but they're expecting a death toll of about 10,000. 
And last year, we also had the typhoon, which claimed 1,700 lives. So while this is something common to us, perhaps the, the people who were caught unaware did not realize the intensity or the gravity mm -hmm. of this particular typhoon. Many were caught on the streets and, sure, and I know. washed out that. into the sea. Yeah. It actually looks like some of them were playing around at some point, and then it was almost a tsunami. tsunami yes, effect. yes. Now, were your, was your family aware of the severity of this, Joe? I believe that the, the heads up was given, so it doesn't seem like they were really caught by surprise. And, well, mostly on my mother's side of the family, they've always had a tendency to uh, be very cautious, almost to the point of always being cautious. But what do they do? What, how, where can you go? What, what, where do you retreat to? Where would you have gone to get away from this? I understand that they were making some uh, evacuation centers out of gymnasiums and school buildings, things like that. And I understand that in certain cases they weren't quite substantial either. I've seen mm -hmm. some video of people looking through the windows as the storm's coming in. The rain was so substantial, the wind so substantial inside the domicile, I was waiting for the roof to pop off. Mm -hmm. Describe some of these uh, areas for us, if you would, Cecilia. I mean, what, what's the terrain like? Is it flat? Is it hilly? And I know, obviously, now there's so much debris that it's hard to access some of these places, but what's it like usually? Uh, during typhoons like this, the hardest hit are those provinces and far-flung areas that are up on the hills. The hills. When, because of siltation and because of the, uh, the, the logging, the effects of logging, where all of this, there's not enough to hold the ground in. Uh, the mountainsides collapse, and that's where all of the the victims of the uh, typhoons come from. Now, when 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 all of this siltation happens, the ground uh, wipes out whole villages, and uh, Takloban, which was the center at the eye of the storm of Yolanda, Haiyan, uh, is a city. It's a center of business. It's a center of government. It's a center where people have, where we have schools, and the reports say that it was flattened. Flattened to the ground, everything was lost. Yeah. So um, it made no distinction between the mountainsides and the city. This particular typhoon just swept through the mm. city, and it only lasted for a day. Usually these typhoons go on for several days. I thought it was 48 hours, no? Uh, it came in at 4.40 mm. in the morning, and by the afternoon, it was already uh, dying down a bit and moving out to the South now, China Sea. When will you go back? Um, I'm spending Christmas here because of family, but of course being here, watching through television and shows like yeah. this, it really breaks your heart because it brings to memory many of the uh, incidents in the past typhoons that brought out all of these difficulties mm. that our countrymen are now feeling. Yeah, it's really dramatic. Well. Good luck to you when you do go back. Cecilia Lazaro and Joe Ballandrino, thank you so much. Thank you.